Welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. Jersey Jim here. <clears throat> so today, I got a lot of stuff planned for today. First thing I'm going to be doing is casting a Hopkins lure out of a big ass can of Bondo that I got. So I have a lot of ideas for the Bondo. Um, I have here a box that I made, duct tape box, a little bit of cardboard there. That's just a little bit larger than the than the size of the Hopkins lure. This is painted with uh, Vaseline or petroleum jelly. So I'm going to get the Bondo ready, mix it up in the cup with a stir, and when I get ready to pour it, I'll turn the camera back on. I also have a, uh, a marble for the register, just to show you what a marble looks like, I guess. I'm not going to be using it. The stuff's real easy to carve, so I have a uh, sculpture tool called a loop, and I'll be... Um, making the register with that so in a minute I'll turn the camera back on when I got this ready to go the reason I'm doing this today and I'm uh, on this Bondo kick is because I had such a uh, good result with my pyramid sinker mold uh, I haven't cast more than these three but I haven't it's been raining out like constantly month of uh, February 2018 but we're ready to go this stuff really stresses me out it is uh, very temperamental Alright, so instead of trying to get every little last drop out of the cup, I'm just going to go ahead and start working it. So sorry knife, hell yeah. I'll leave home without it. Alright, here goes nothing. Oh, it's sinking in pretty good. Marble is for, it's called a register. It allows you to put the mold back together in the same orientation. Wow, that's still really, really mucky. I'm going to be carving this thing for a while, I think. So you'd put the marble in kind of like that, a little bit further in, but I really don't want to mess with this stuff too much until it cures a little bit more. All right, so clearly we're going to have to go back and carve that a little bit. I don't think it'll be necessarily be much of a problem unless it sinks further in. It's sinking further in. Damn it, Jim. So I've removed it from the cardboard, which I did uh, paint with Vaseline, and it is inset pretty far, as you can see there. Hopefully, as you can see. All right, so we're gonna just uh, hog away some of that material with the uh, the Swiss Army knife. We're gonna put some register holes in there. All right, so the uh, I'm going to need to redo this. This is a learning process for me. Apparently I didn't mix the, uh, the Bondo up enough. There's a big void on this side over here. I could, I could deal with it, but it's really close to the wall of, this, uh, of the Hopkins lure. So if I fill that in, that unmixed stuff is going to create a, uh, like a layer of uncured material. When I pour the lead in, it's liable to break the mold. So we're gonna dig this out, I'll clean it off, and then uh, recast it. And I'll show you that when I get there. Alright, here we go again. I figure I'll use the, uh, the mixing device they supplied instead of the cup that I had. Maybe that'll help out. Now, this stuff, I, I believe, the more you work it, the more you work the hardener into it, the, hard, the um, faster it hardens. Let's try to be careful not to get too many bubbles into it as well this time. I think stirring it might not be the right thing to do. I think using a, you know, some kind of knife or something like this might be the way to go. Yeah, I'm getting a much better mix out of it with the knife than I did the stirrer. there for a minute we'll flatten this out hopefully all right so now I think we wait we wait until this stuff cures a little bit and we can gauge the amount of surface tension or, or hardness that it has acquired by this glob that's in here all right that was my idea so meanwhile I'm going to try to get these bubbles out 
Let's check this, we'll see. If I lead something in that, yeah, see, that's just the weight of the stick. And it's sinking in, that would sink in pretty, uh, pretty far, so I'll keep popping bubbles. Alright, that looks pretty good in terms of the bubbles. We'll see how this looks. So this is just the weight of the stick on it. I think we're I think we're probably good. I think if we wait longer, it might be a problem. So I have a lot more Vaseline on this side. I'm gonna be painting the top with Vaseline after. Uh, so here we go. Don't sink. Don't sink too much. All right, it's not sinking. Uh, I think we got this. You gotta tap this up. Better than the last pour. So far. I'm gonna tap this end in a little bit. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good now. See, this end had to go in more. To fill that that void in, oh, yeah, don't move it, Jim. All right, so we'll let this cure. We're gonna need to carve this one out a little bit too. It is getting undercut, but it is well mixed. Got rid of the bubbles, so we'll see this in a minute. Yeah, this is gonna be a long video. Like I said, this is gonna be a long video. I don't know. Maybe I won't put the fail in. Maybe I look like a like a like I know what I'm doing. I'm sitting here for about three hours. I didn't haven't moved in three hours. Uh, just started on this actually. I got sidetracked into something else. But what I went ahead and did is I took uh, a razor knife and just kind of cut into this edge. I probably have to remove a little bit more. Cut down to that side right there, and then I took some material off of here, and now I'm just kind of bringing this level down a little bit so that the uh, the top mold has some mass to it and this stuff really really does it's really really nice to work with uh, compared to the other piece that I'm working on I, if you got kids there if you're a kid don't watch I mean if you have kids I guess it's okay to watch but don't let your kids watch the other thing I'm making is a is a, is a dick weight <laughs> I've been carving that for three hours it's coming along and I'm going to be casting, it's coming along again, I'm going to be casting this in uh, the Bondo, uh, three part mold, and then uh, pouring pouring it out of lead, so I'm going to have like a six ounce dick weight, for sale, hopefully, but anyway, back to this, when I get the other side uh, finished up and this piece is, is ready to pop out, I'll turn the camera back on. Alright, so I got this thing uh, all carved out about halfway up all the way around I get my registration holes carved in I was gonna pop it out it should pop right out but I think I kind of want it stuck in there so I can tamp this down and uh, not have it jump around that was a concern when I was doing the, uh, the four ounce pyramid sinkers four and five ounce pyramid sinkers so uh, let me uh, clean up from this four five hours four and a half, five hours yeah five hours of uh, of work. This is work. If you're me, I guess. It's fun work. Never carved a penis before. I think that's pretty good. Went to art school, never drew a penis either. Big leaves, that's what I drew. Alright, we got it all ready to go. Got it remounted back in the uh, box and painted with Vaseline. Sides I painted as well, so it's easier to extract later. Uh, so here we go. I wonder the best way to mix this stuff. I will figure it out. Before I'm through that gallon of Bondo, I will figure it out. 
Oh, hey, that looks pretty good already. Check that out. Not too bad, Jim. so that we can tap the bubbles out. Now I think I'll write what is in here while this stuff is still a little damp because it's uh, well, it is a joy to work with. dry it um, with, with uh, gouges and such it's not so easy to, uh, to write on. I guess I could take an orbital sander and just put it on here like they do with concrete, get rid of the voids the bubbles, it would probably be a damn good idea. Good thing I just thought of it after I poured it, huh? Tomorrow morning I'll pop it open and uh, we'll see what's going on with it and uh, I'm going to keep working on this the dick weight uh, we'll be casting that probably tomorrow, the next day, I don't know. But this is certainly done, and it's going to be a, su a success. It took a long time, but hell yeah, we got it done. Hell yeah, that's freaking awesome. Good night, everybody. Here is the, um, the Hopkins lure, the four-ounce Hopkins lure. I took it out of the cardboard and filed some of the, the sharp edges off. Uh, that happened from the sharp edges last night. Carved for uh, carved for five hours last night with a with a razor knife and wound up cutting myself on bondo. Go figure. Huh? This should come right apart. Ah, yeah. It's not real big, so it's not going to create a lot of heat. Going to be forging today with Dylan. Going to be uh, either breaking or finishing the, the, the whale harpoon. Alright. You going to come out there, buddy, or what? Yeah, you are. I didn't pick up too much of the pattern on that side, but that's no big deal. Hopkins lore. That, that's freaking awesome. That is awesome. I'm a big fan of the Bondo. That's oh, upside down, Jim. Yeah, this is uh, the Hopkins lure. If you bend them, they have more or less action. Um, this one's a little, a little bent from last time I fished with it, so it's, you know, this is stainless steel, I believe. The ones I'm making now are going to be made of lead and should bend pretty easily. Let's take that out and fit her back together. Hell yeah, that's gonna work. We'll be pouring it next. That's freaking awesome. That is awesome. I think I'm gonna do a diamond jig next after I get done with the the dick weight, which I have set in. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a beautiful thing. That's what we needed for the first pour. Right? Hell yeah. That's cool. All right. So. Funny thing is, this piece of basswood was actually from a tarpon carving project. <laughs> that that's basically what. That's it right there. That's gonna be the thumbnail. Also, uh, went ahead and for the Hopkins lore, the four ounce Hopkins lore, I cut the uh, 
the hole for the Hopkins lure and this edge here I'm figuring when I pour it I can you know, kind of set that up that way it'll fill you know from the lower point up to the higher point there I think it's gonna work I think it's gonna be that's gonna be brilliant but I gotta let this stuff cure for a day or two before I pour so again this project has taken way too long but it's gonna work it's gonna be neat Hopkins lure we'll excited for that one so in a minute we'll be pouring in two days in a minute for you in a second for you hell yeah alright we're almost ready to pour on this beautiful March day with uh, well, I mean the snow melted there's probably still five inches so what I did is I got it all set up I got some brass some brass wire and I'm gonna put a loop on the inside there and then after we pour it we should be able to extract it out on that might not work I might have to cut that part out which might be a problem maybe it's not gonna pour maybe it won't come out I won't know till we till we try that's what I'm doing today. I also got the, uh, the Hopkins lore mold. I'll probably put these videos together. So if you're watching the end of the video for the Hopkins lore, there's going to be a dick weight too. And if you're watching the dick weight movie, there's going to be a Hopkins Hopkins lore. But uh, this is my setup for, for pouring lead here. So I got a little camp stove there in a flower pot full of rocks. Uh, just to keep it a little bit heavier than the uh, than the lead that's on the top, and then we got these little muffins of uh, pre pre. Um, I treated them with uh, candle wax, supposedly that uh, removes impurities. Typically, the impurities raise to the surface, though. That's been my experience. You can just spoon them off. So once this heats up, I'm going to uh, go ahead and clamp this together. I don't give this one a pour. This one too probably won't work, but it's going to turn that way so I don't. This one's been drying or curing for about a month, a little less than a month. That still sounds like it's kind of wet. Maybe I shouldn't open it yet, but I'm gonna. Close, real close. Alright, bring your screwdriver out. That's part of a Hopkins lure. Oh, check that out. That's freaking awesome. Alright. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that's the sprue. Alright, so we just bend that. This has got to come out, though. Alright. That's the sprue. Alright, so it ran. That's a good thing. I was kind of concerned about that. Let's check out the other one. I'll put the clamp back on this one. And we'll get ready for the second floor. I think the key to this one is the Hopkins floor is going to be tilting it on an angle like that. For this, uh, this oxidation level. This oxidation level on the top here. And the two brass rods that are in there. Thank 
that's it. We got this one done, I think the other one, well, let's take a look at the other one while we're waiting for this one to cool off, eh? Good, didn't break apart anymore. Sweet, a little bit of a, a little bit of a core gap right there, right here. It's a biggie. My God made files. That's it. screw on this one the same way. Well, you know, like I said, it's a learning experience for me. Should have probably pulled this out in the in the beginning and bend this off but if I make it a uniform uniform diameter that won't be an issue. But that's it. That's the penis weight. <laughs> file work and uh, we're good to go check that out I got another idea uh, for this which uh, I'll show you inside after I clean all this mess up oh yeah the uh, Hopkins, whoa, Hopkins work oh, don't get wet. Uh, it's pretty cool that worked this one's gonna work too I guarantee it eventually it'll eventually work and I'm not giving up until I got a homemade Hopkins lure to catch a fish on. That's why I'm doing that. I could go out and buy a Hopkins lure. Man. One side. Again. I guess I'm doing this one again as well. Alright. One last time and then... I don't know. Maybe I pour some in that way and turn it that way. Yeah, I think that's what I gotta do. I gotta try it anyway, right? Alright, let me take this out and then I'll uh, pour one last time for the Hopkins. Jim, a little faster. Damn it. This one might not work. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's a little better. Completely full. No voids. Kind of hard to extract. Oh, that be, you know, I just said that, and now this one comes out no problem. That's it. Hopkins lure. Again, I have an idea, another idea for, for these. Actually, Sam the Barber. Um, I mentioned him earlier in the video. Uh, I just went in and saw him, and he had some ideas for me for this. I, I actually saw them before when I was at his house, but, uh, let's see, he actually gave me something that's pretty awesome, you know, you, uh, if you surround yourself with positive, good people, get yourself a job, like-minded people, never have a bad day, and you can shape your days by the company you keep. Which is awesome. So Sam, I went and saw Sam today. So Sam gave he tied up some stuff for me last last uh, last time I went in. But we're talking about the early spring striped bass and uh, fluke feeding frenzy on shrimp. And he tied these up for me. A whole bag of them. And he gave me some other. Some other pieces in here. It's freaking awesome. That is awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pour one more Hopkins lure, and then we'll go inside, and I'll show you my uh, 
my ideas. I don't know. If, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you my ideas for, for both, I guess. And take a minute. You'll see it in a second, though. So a few things I've learned since the beginning of this, uh, this marathon of activity. Um, first off, mixing this stuff. Uh, I think mixing it with the knife, I got the most success with it. Mixing it thoroughly. Adding enough hardener. Gauging the hardness of the material on the outside of the container before you set the thing into the container. That's valuable, very valuable information. Other thing is that the sprue, and I mentioned this a few times in the video, the sprue has to be cut halfway between these valves, if you will, like a clamshell. It's got to be between the mouth of the clamshell. It can't be set off to one side. Otherwise, unless it's completely, you know, cylindrical and you snap the sprue off, you know, uniformly every time, which doesn't happen, you're going to have a hard time extracting it. So, next one, I'll be doing that, but a success. Uh, same thing with the, the other bolt that I made. The sprue is, unfortunately, here. So, it's isolated as well. I think what I should have done, possibly pour it through here between these two valves. Maybe between all three. Right here, in between all three valves. That would have been the way to go. And then the wire, again, has to be between the valves. I drilled it into one side because it was a little bit offset, but, you know. Learning experience, happy accident. So I'll have to do maybe not this one again. This one's done, but uh, the other one possibly. Oh wait, I didn't bend them up. All right, hang on a minute. I'll be right back. Oh, that makes a good back, good back scratcher. All right, so the end of the dick weight movie. There it is, the dick weight. That is uh, not what you think. Well, if you think it's a sperm. And it, yeah, that's what it is. That's what you think it is. I made a couple uh, different orientation on the on the uh, the loop, and then I made one a little more functional. This they're all they're all um, eight ounces, eight ounces of weight. So these are these are some deep sea dicks, but or heavy current dicks. Um, and then the Hopkins lure, this was uh, kind of Sam's idea, uh, he had the whole thing painted. I think I'm going to leave one side silver, one side white, it should, uh, at least on a couple of them. I've got a, oh, here, got one all silver here. Now you could paint this, you could actually wire brush it, would bring up the, uh, the shine a little bit, and then uh, paint it with a urethane or uh, Epoxy, something like that, keep them nice and clean, but I don't think bluefish care. So that's that. Thank you, Sam, for the uh, for the little shrimp. Thank you, Dylan, for the fine keyboard, and thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this movie. If uh, you haven't seen it, check out the uh, the the one that started all this nonsense, the pyramid sinker mold. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Hope you check out the other movies. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.